Meat City, baby. Hello and welcome back to Meat City Gaming. JD here with another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. And today we're once again in a finals championship matchup in the Grand Arena format. And the strategy for Grand Arena, it's about to get a whole lot more important because very soon we will have Grand Arena championships coming to the game. And basically there's going to be leagues and divisions and you advance through the ranks and it's going to be this, I don't know, competitive uh, format and you need to get points to advance. And hopefully at the end of all of it, um, whether you're in the, the second league or the first league or division or whatever it is, will lead to way better rewards. Uh, whereas now for a standard Grand Arena matchup, if you get first or second, maybe you miss out on some Mark V stun guns, maybe you miss out on a single Zeta material. Not too significant, not a big deal whether you, uh, you win or lose, but probably, hopefully, with the Grand Arena Championships, every step up through the ladder, every division rank is going to have a meaningful impact on the rewards that you get. So the strategy that you put into these matchups is gonna be more important. So today I wanted to cover the uh, the championship matchup because it's a pretty good matchup in terms of uh, roster. And there's an interesting strategy that my opponents used that I don't think is the right strategy. I don't think it's how you should approach Grand Arena, but we're gonna see and, uh, and we'll check out if it works or if it fails. And then we'll take a look at why is it? Is it because of the strategy? Do I make a mistake? Whatever it is, we'll get to that. So first thing I wanna do is jump into my opponent's roster. And I'll show you first the, uh, the arena matchup. And this is from one of the bots in Discord. And you can see that it is a pretty close matchup as far as the metrics go. Uh, GP is the same, ship GP, how it's split up, very similar. Uh, ranks are both high ranks, mine's a little bit higher. And then you can see gear 11, gear 12, gear 12 plus one. These are all very, very close numbers all the way down the line. I have a slight mod advantage for the lower speed mods for plus 10s and plus 15s, but my opponent has a big advantage for plus 25 speed mods. Uh, that's that's a lot of plus 25s. I don't have anything that can come close to that. And so we can kind of look through the rest of it and it's all very, very similar. So this should be a very competitive, very close matchup and nobody else in our matchup could even come close. It was the two of us and then nobody else I think even had Darth uh, Revan. So we knew this was gonna be the championship matchup if we ended up facing in the finals and we did. So let's see how it goes. So we'll go in and take just a quick look at my opponent's roster just to kind of show what they're working with. And you'll see it is, it's a top tier lineup. They are not missing a whole lot. Uh, Revens, both of them are there. Commander Luke, Jedi Training Ray, and they're all gear 12. They've got a lot of gear. Malak is in there. So this is an impressive roster, an impressive lineup. Um, the ships are a little bit weaker than mine. They've got a five star Falcon and a five star Hound's Tooth. Um, so a little bit less in, in the, the ship kind of top tier uh, meta there, but still all the right pieces, just not quite maxed out yet. So let's take a look at the strategy. My opponent has already gone for the, um, the character based attack. And for some reason, it looks like he was holding off on the, the fleet. So my opponent did go for a full clear and he went one for one. And the strategy that I used in this matchup was I put Darth Revan on defense. Basically, he's the blocker. You can either beat a Darth Revan or you can't. And if you can't and he's there, you're not going to clear my territory. And if you can, then hopefully you had to use so much that you're going to leave yourself vulnerable. So he one-shot Revan. Again, those crazy plus 25 speed mods, his team was going to outspeed mine. So he probably didn't have too tough of a time clearing my Darth Revan lineup. And then none of the others here are too scary in terms of defense. Um, I do have a decent Old Republic defense team that can sometimes surprise people. But other than that, you're not gonna have a lot of trouble getting through this. My opponent, on the other hand, has gone really strong on offense and left not much on defense. So there's a First Order team, but it's not Zated and not leveled up. The Ewoks are in pretty good shape. Um, an Old Republic, similar to mine in terms of where it's at, and then a Rogue One team, no Zetas. The Bounty Hunter team is probably the scariest team he has on defense with a Bosk lead Zeta. 
and a five-star Enfys Nest. And then he's got the Padme Galactic Republic team with a five-star undergeared Padme and then some decent guys uh, backing up the rest of that team, gear 12 Kenobi and Anakin and a, and a well-geared Ahsoka. So with all that said, I've left some pretty powerful stuff on offense for myself and I've run the math, hopefully I've run it correctly, and it looks like I need to go for 59 points, it's actually 58 and two thirds, but 59 points a battle in order to beat his performance in the character combat. And then hopefully I should be able to clear without too much trouble with the ships. There's, I guess, a question. He did save his uh, Millennium Falcon, Han's Millennium Falcon, in reserve, but not with the Hound's Tooth. So I guess he's got a, a timeout team here and maybe I'll have trouble with that. But I got to think my Geo Trio, if it's just a five-star Hound's Tooth, I think I can blast through that. But we'll see. Maybe I get stuck. Uh, maybe he's got some really powerful Rebels backing up that Han's Millennium Falcon of Biggs and, and some of the other characters a Wedge to kind of put up uh, buff ability, uh, buff block. We'll see how that all works out. Uh, but what I'm going to do is go for the character matchup and hopefully put up a higher score just based on the character combat. And again, 59 points is what we're going for. So here are the matchups, and I'm just going to go through these one at a time. First thing I always look for is an Ewok team. And if so, does it have low gray? And either way, I'm bringing in Nest and it's just, do I need to bring in a second support character, Farm Boy Luke, to give me some extra tenacity? There's no low gray here, so we're going for it with a solo Enfys Nest. And the strategy here is pretty straightforward. They're just gonna beat on Nest and hopefully eventually we're going to break through and take out Elder. And usually with counterattacks, we take out somebody else first. They'll get revived. But eventually Ness kind of builds up her crit damage over the course of the battle with those critical, uh, with those counterattacks. And then hopefully we break through and can take out Ewok Elder. And then the rest of the team will fall apart not long after that. So not a whole lot of commentary on this battle. Um, I'll probably speed it up a little bit as we get going here again because this is just a wait for them to beat on you and then for my opportunity to get a counterattack in. I could finish off Chirpa. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to take out Elder in one hit, but let's go for it. That one's more important. We did leave him on a little bit there. And there goes Chirpa, and there goes Ewok Elder. So now this team is just going to fall apart. I could probably put it on auto at this point. Nest is such a powerful character, really, really strong. Uh, just the ability to take down single teams, the ability to attack through Foresight, uh, the counters, the constantly stacking protection, just really makes Nest a good counter to a lot of teams, but Ewoks are one of the best. And there we go. So 63 banners, we've got a four banner cushion going into the rest of the battles. So next I'm gonna go for the best team that they've got, that's the Bounty Hunter Squad. And for this, I'm gonna go with Jedi Training Ray. Uh, I'm not going to use my Commander Luke, that's probably my best team, because I don't want to be removing Term Meter from Nest. I want to get the, uh, the health block in there, and then I want Nest to actually take turns and do a big Alpha Strike to take, uh, to take Nest out. And also I can bring in Finn, and he'll kind of ramp up damage over time, and as long as we can squeeze in there at some point, we will be fine. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is try to get Bosk locked down, prevent that um, initial taunt if we can. We'll put some stealth on BB-8. We'll knock back the turn a little bit. And now we're going to start working here. Uh, Boba Fett or Cad Bane, I guess is the big question. Let's see if we can get Boba Fett down. He's a little bit um, less tanky. We do have to take him out twice. And 
down once. Now we just got to get him a second time. All right, one down and four to go. All right, we're going to go for Django next. Once again, we're going to prevent... Oh, so Bosk can't taunt because he's got ability blocks, so I'm not going to worry about him. But let's knock the turn meter back on Cad Bane. I don't care if Bosk uses a basic. That's not going to hurt me. And the big hit. Call BB-8. Didn't even need it. A little stealth back up. And Illuminated Destiny. There we go. And now we're going to get a couple of hits in here on Nest while we can, so we don't have to go through the whole uh, character later on. So we'll get one hit in, then we'll wait for Nest to take a turn. And we're going to go for Cad Bane. And I'm going to purposely do a couple of basics here. Let's do a big hit, ramp up some damage. Uh, I don't want to be doing specials all the time because I don't want to be knocking down turn meter constantly on the enemies here. So we're just going to get a couple of basics worked in here. Trying to get Ness to go. So again, just a basic. Uh, we will ramp up the damage on Finn. And we're just chewing through this team here. And a couple of basics and we should have Ness go. Big hit here. There we go. So that was a 60 banner. So again, we're still over our 59 goal. Uh, we've got a 4-5 cushion and probably a little bit more even built in than that. So things are going well. And I think that was the biggest challenge that we're going to have on this team. And that kind of highlights the problem here. Without Darth Revan, without Jedi Knight Revan on defense... I don't have anything to fail. Like, yes, you if you go offense in a mirror, you're probably going to win. But the chance that you lose is how you can secure that victory. If it's Revan versus Revan and I lose, then I'm done. If I don't have to even worry about that, I've got a pretty clear path here. So things are going very well. Uh, next, we're going to do the Old Republic team. I think that's the next biggest threat. And... And we're going to use Jedi Knight Revan for this, and that's kind of, I think, going to be overkill here. And we'll leave out Hermit Yoda, we'll put in Bastila. And this should be a pretty straightforward fight with a fully functioning Jedi Knight Revan team. Uh, Mission is kind of the dangerous one. We want to get her down if we can. So let's knock back her uh, cooldowns. And she's marked, so we should just be able to blast right through this. Big call to assist, Zalbar strong, but Jedi Knight Revan is just such a powerful team that there's not a whole lot they're going to be able to do against it. Uh, and again, we're recharging health and protection as we go, so going for a, uh, a full 60 here, um, not too much to ask, I don't think. Get 
this done. And there we go. 59 points still. That's our par score, so we're still in pretty good shape. So Padme is probably the next uh, most dangerous group, and they do have a Zeta Barris, so they can heal with crits, but when you have Kenobi, he'll give you crit immunity. Um, we're going to go with uh, Commander Luke and, and his fully maxed Rebel Squad, and I imagine we're going to blow right through this with the amount of damage we're putting out. Actually, the, the smarter choice might be Treya, because that's got Nihilus, and then there's absolutely no worry um, about a problem from the enemy team because we have Annihilate on hand. So I had originally planned out to do Commander Luke for the Padme squad, and then Treya for the First Order squad, but the First Order squad is no threat, uh, has no Zetas, so let's do that. Let's do Treya for this Padme squad, uh, just because we have Nihilus, so no matter what, even if they're healing, if their Zeta Barris is able to keep them up, Nihilus is eventually going to be able to knock them down with his Annihilate. So let's do that. We're going to go for Treya. And we need one more to fill in here. And I'm thinking either Emperor or B2. Let's go B2. I don't have a full squad for him to go into right now. Um, but his buff immunity, it, it was really good uh, in the event to acquire Padme. So why not use him now? against Padme again. And there is no worry about these because uh, stuns, debuffs, oh actually it's a locked stun, so that probably won't get cleansed. Interesting. Uh, first time I'm seeing this interaction, so let's see what happens. We are going to um, lock down Anakin. We don't want him going off on us. And let's do an Isolate on Padme. Because she can call her assists. Let's get some buff immunity up. It gets immediately cleansed. And now we're going to try and burn down Anakin. Unfortunately, they get the taunt. Nihilus with a nice uh, 5 here on his cooldown. Reduction. Again, let's go for the buff immunity where we can get it. All right, we're going to give some protection back. Let's go with Nihilus. He can't regenerate it himself. We have Annihilate ready. Let's just get rid of him. All right, now we need to focus on Anakin. Daze is good. He won't be calling his uh, call to assist. There's a big hit from Anakin. Uh, let's again lock him down. Buff immunity, one more hit should do it, and we can regenerate our protection here. So there we go, Scion is back to full. Uh, I think we want to try and get Ahsoka next. Alright, again we're going to rebuild some protection. Let's go with, um, let's go with Nihilus, we want his full turn here. Keep Isolate going. Let's reduce Thrawn's cooldown. I want his protection uh, regeneration to come back up faster. Set off Frenzy. And who do we go with here? Let's go for Treya because Scion can regenerate his own on his next turn. that and we're not going to go with the fracture because I want Sion to get his turn here there we go his protection's back up and I think everyone but B2 yep only one missing protection so again 59 
uh, right where we need to be, a really good result. Okay, just Rogue One and First Order left, and they're both a little bit lackluster. Uh, Rogue One is a Rebel team with a really weak link that's a Vist in there. That just screams Imperial Troopers. They're, they have some bonuses against Rebels, and getting that first kill sets them off. And they've got, uh, boy, they've got no, no chase here either. He must have saved everything for offense. So let's go for Imperial Troopers there. That's a really reliable 60-point team. Uh, with all of the health and protection that they regenerate by taking out enemies quickly. So we're going to do that. And I don't think we're going to go with Shore. Let's get Death Trooper in there. And we want to get that first kill as soon as we can. So we're going to focus on Bistin. We get the buffs. Call the big attack. First character's down. And now, K2, we do need to focus on K2. He's going to be a little bit dangerous. But we can go for a death mark. And there he goes. And I could do the sweep here. Uh, let's try it. I think that'll regenerate us back up to full if it works. Jin will probably survive this, but the other two might go down. Yep. And a daze here would be good. We don't get the stun, but there we go, and that's going to be a 60-point banner. Super easy win, super fast. If there's a team with a weak link that you can take down quickly, Imperial Troopers make a whole lot of sense. And the final team we have to face here is this uh, kind of—oh, they're not even all 85. That's such a weird team. He has such a deep roster, um, but— Boy, scraping together this defense just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So we're going to go with uh, Commander Luke and company. And because this is the last fight, is there anyone better to stick in here? I don't think so. Yep, I think this is going to be just fine. I guess I could go with Biggs for a little more offense over my Pathfinder, but I like the Pathfinder here. And we should be able to just blow through this team, but let's get rid of as much damage as we can. First Order TIE Pilot is a source of damage. Uh, let's do... Yep, this should take out the Officer. We can stun Kylo. Oh, we missed. Well, if we buff, we'll get him. Knock down the turn meter. And that should do it right there. And another 60 banner. So that is a mission accomplished. Uh, we should have, I don't know, 10, 12, maybe a 10 or 12 point lead at this point. Let's take a look. Uh, nine point lead. Okay, so. That's pretty good. Then all we need to do is take out the ship battle. And I could get cute with this and come in with less reinforcements to try and up my score. Um, but I'm a little leery about what this could be in terms of a timeout squad. Uh, so I'm going to bring in a full complement. The worst thing to do would be to lose and leave an opening. Um, I've got a, a big enough lead here. And with my ships being fully maxed out, uh, gear 12, seven stars, not all gear 12, but mostly, mostly gear 12, all seven stars. I think he's going to have a hard time getting through it. So let's bring in Thrawn and we're going to go with the Geo Trio. Then we'll bring in Vader. Uh, I like Imperial TIE Fighter. And then we'll go with the Silencer. Um, and we'll leave that last spot open. I think that's fine. I could bring in, um, I could bring in one of those other two, Boba Fett's Slave One or the, the Reaper, but I just, I don't think I'm going to need them. So let's leave that last spot open, go for a little bit of uh, a bonus here as well. Let's 
start off with the try attack at the beginning. Get a stun in there. And now we'll buff up our offense, and this will give us the power to punch through that uh, pounce tooth. There we go. And he brings in a Boba Fett, uh, Slave 1. And let's go with... Uh, let's go with Vader. This hit can't miss, so that will take out Slave 1. We get the dots up. Let's keep working here. Hang in there, sun pack. All right, try attack should take this one down. And one more follow-up from Vader. And there we go. So we didn't even need the other two ships. So a nice 62 banner win. And I think that's going to put it out of reach for my opponent. So obviously, I can't force them to attack. There's another 12 hours or so left on Grand Arena. Um, but when I post the video, if my opponent you know, does put some victory up, I'll have in the comment below, in the description, what the final score is to give you guys that last update. But this looks like a pretty secured victory. And the main point here is going all offense doesn't really work, especially if you're going to go first, because it allows the other team to read your performance, gauge their team and know what they need to hit in terms of uh, coming back at you. But even all that said, just you've got to have your strongest team. When there's a team that doesn't have any counters other than the mirror, You've got to have that on defense, I think, uh, in order to force this scenario, right? Either they're going to leave their Revan on defense as well, and you have a standoff, or if they send theirs and lose, well, then, then you're in really good shape. So that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions about Grand Arena or any input or advice, if you saw anything that I did that you would do differently, or if you want to know why I made the choices that I made, feel free to leave a comment below and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. So we're looking forward to Grand Arena Championships. Um, hopefully it's done right. There hasn't been a lot that's encouraged uh, positive thinking recently. It's kind of been a downward trend, but this is a chance. We've got some good things in the pipeline. Grand Arena Championships, the new territory battle, and some other things that seem to be headed in potentially the right direction. So fingers crossed. Let's see how that works out. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.